Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Well, I've got a special episode for you guys today. I've been scared to review this guitar for a little over two years now because this is my favorite Stratocaster I've ever ran across. And I've had a good amount of Stratocasters, right? I've had a lot more Les Pauls. But I bought this in 2020, back in the era where I sold everything, whether I loved it, loved it, or not. Nowadays, I've been stockpiling a whole bunch of stuff for my own personal collection, so now that I'm finally in that mindset, I can review this guitar and not have to worry about somebody trying to buy this from me, because I'm just going to tell them no. It might not be all that special to everybody else, but when you find a good guitar, you keep it. This is my own personal 2013 Fender USA Stratocaster. You might think, okay, not that fancy to the headstock, but when you look at the body, you'll see it's a weird thing going on here. It's got exposed wood grain. It's not completely flat and flush. What is this process? You might have seen it before. The technique used to get this is called sandblasting. So essentially what they do is they take a body, typically made of ash, and they put it in a little chamber, they take their little blow gun, and they blast it with sand. And what that does is it gets rid of the weak areas of the wood, leaving just the strong ridges. And then after that, you can apply this whole finish, this one being called Frost Blue. Now, I've always liked this guitar because it reminds me of like a working man's guitar. It's a blue jeans, white shirt thing. So like if I was just gonna be a gigging musician, I'd probably just wear blue jeans, have a white shirt, and gig it like that. Sadly, I didn't have time to color coordinate my outfit today. I'm sorry. <laughs> but due to the whole sandblasting process, it's not like a, a full-on gloss finish either. It's kind of satin-like, but I don't know if that's really even the right word because it's like semi-glossy at the same time. It's just a really nice feel. And Fender's done a whole bunch of sandblasted strats, but you got to remember this was one of the earlier ones. They did a whole bunch of made in Mexico sandblasted strats, I think around like 2015, 2016. I know there's also some Sweetwater exclusive USA ones out there, but they got the giant headstock. I prefer the smaller headstocks on my Fenders. And when I bought this, I kind of thought maybe it was some, you know, exclusive limited edition run. But what's funny, in the 2020 rundown of my collection, I actually found the original owner of this guitar. And the story behind it's kind of interesting. So let me share that with you. So the year is 2012. Ermi's Music was having a special dealer event where they custom ordered some pretty cool guitars and did limited edition runs. They got this guitar in during that time. However, this guitar, whether it was on display somewhere or never actually made it to the sales floor, I don't know for 100% sure, never got sold until the year 2017. So at least four years, it was in some guitar storeroom somewhere, probably either just forgotten about or the dealer had the same reservations as me. It's too good to sell. But then in 2017, it was listed on Reverb where a guy named Alex bought it. Now he had it for about two and a half years. The reason he decided to move it on is because he and his son built a USA parts caster and they had some sentimental value to it. He was mainly a Gibson guy, kind of like me, so he listed it on Reverb and he sold it. So it was shipped from Alabama down to Indianapolis around 2019. And then in 2020, I was getting really big into fenders. I really enjoyed documenting them. I saw this thing show up. I was like, cool, one of the sandblasted strats. I didn't really realize that a USA sandblasted strat for this year was particularly rare or valuable valuable or a desirable thing. I just thought, hey, it's cool. It looks like blue jeans and a white shirt. So I picked it up. But when I got it, it I just, I couldn't bring myself to make a video on it because I knew somebody would want to buy it. So it just kind of sat around. I've used it in a few different videos, most prominently my Make Progress Monday series, which lasted a whole one episode. <laughs> <laughs> Something else I've always liked about this guitar is the case it came in. It's got that really nice 50s, 60s, like vintage looking interior with the orange. It's made by G&G. &G. And what's kind of cool about this being new old stock is I think this is the first time I've actually ever bothered opening this. We've got a pretty interesting Fender hang tag right here. Just says, thank you for choosing this. And they list all their models. Not that helpful, but it's cool. We have the trim bar, which honestly, I like the ones that have the little plastic bits at the end. I, I don't use trim, so I don't care about that. I'll just stay in the case. Got our serial number placard here. Looks like a Fender strap with Dunlop strap locks on it. Somebody put Dunlops. I'm not sure if that came factory or not. That's just part of this guitar. There's even a cable in this one. 
set of tools, all that stuff, fender warranty. I mean, this is pretty complete as far as that goes. So I'm technically the third owner if you don't count the shop. I'm not sure why the other guy sold it. I honestly couldn't even tell you how much I paid for it. Probably like uh, 1100 1200 something like that. I mean, somebody could offer me 3500 bucks for this today. I still wouldn't sell it. Maybe 5000 but d don't offer me the money. D don't take my guitar. I like this thing. Whenever I want to play a Stratocaster, I grab this thing because it's got the good tones, it's got the good feel, and it has a few other special attributes to it that we can talk about on the workbench. So let's head there now. Inside my Stratocaster, there's a couple of cool things to talk about. So, first off, taking the pickguard off, we can actually see this was initially routed for an HSH setup, so if I wanted to modify this, I could put humbuckers in the neck and bridge, but only a single coil in the middle. So kind of Michiya Haruhata signature Stratocaster if you want to check something out like that. But needless to say, I will not be modifying this guitar. But you can see the original barcode in here, which calls this color FR Blue, Frost Blue most likely. But what I find really interesting is just this finish in general, like even if this was not sandblasted, it almost has a slight metallic sheen to it. It looks great with the whole sandblasted wood, right? But when it's on a flat surface, it's kind of strange looking. But we've got some sort of a mark right there, and then another barcode here, then our regular grounding tabs and things like that. So pretty basic in that aspect, but it's got some interesting electronics here we need to talk about. I didn't see any name on these, but looking it up, apparently these came with Custom Shop Fat 50s pickups. And judging by the cloth wiring that comes out, I would definitely agree that they're probably some sort of a custom shop pickup, so maybe that's why I like it. There you can see another barcode. Then here's our pots. However, our last tone pot is a little bit different. You can see the markings are slightly different, and the construction just a little bit different. Like these, you can see the spinning part right here, but this one doesn't. That's because that is a no-load tone pot. So when you turn it down, that activates that pot within the circuit. So you can turn it to nine, to one, whatever you want. But at 10, it kind of clicks into place. So to get it off of that, you have to put a little bit more effort into it. But when that's locked into place at 10, this is taken out of the circuit. So it's supposed to give you slightly more highs apparently in your tone, something like that. A great way to toy around with that besides with one of these is just take a tone out or wire a guitar directly just to the pickup or one pot. So that's just a nice feature to have. It looks like a fairly standard five-way switch in here. The pickguard's just a nice off-white. Like it's not pure white. It's got a little bit of agedness to it. It kind of matches both of these things. Like most of the sandblasted guitars, they generally go for like a dark evil vibe. But this one's just going for, hey, I'm a cloud <laughs> or something like that. So the white matches the light areas in the ash body and the yellowed over tint matches your neck. Those Custom Shop 50s pickups, they have an interesting staggering to the pole pieces, as you can see here. As far as our output jack, nothing too fancy in here, but we can take a look inside the cavity for fun. Within the circuits, the bridge pickup is 6.09k ohms, our neck is 5.93, and the middle position 6.05. And you also have your in-betweens, so those two, 3.07 and 3.03 .03 on those two. Alright, so the only thing that really bugs me about this guitar is the fact that it appears to at least be a three-piece body, and that seam line is ever apparent. I mean, the wood grain is so significantly different here. This is all stair-stepped, and then that just kind of becomes plain, but you can really see that line. There's like a significant feel difference right here, too. Like that part of the body is just so much more higher. So it wouldn't surprise me if this right here is actually finish wear rather than a bald spot from the factory. I like this right here too. There's like a hole in the guitar, but that's just part of the sandblasting process. But the wood grain rings just look so great, especially along the edge. I mean, I get it. Sandblasting's not for everybody, but in the right color, it's pretty cool, especially when you get all of this wood grain going on. We'll continue on here. Lots of ocean wave patterns. There's our seam line again. It's just a cool guitar. You don't see it every day. I would like to see a sandblasted Les Paul from Gibson. I mean, they would have to make it out of ash, which I mean, they have done that before, but like a custom shop. That'd be interesting because I don't think they've done it, but if they have, send me a message. So moving on from our multi-piece ash body, we've got a straight up maple neck. And that looks like it's just a neck. There's no fretboard attached. 
but I really went to town on this thing and made these frets as shiny as humanly possible. And in doing that, I actually kind of uh, naturally buffed the satin finish that was on this neck into like a semi-gloss. I really like the gloss neck, so I don't really mind that too much. But look at that, we actually have abalone inlays. I'd always thought these were just like black moto or something because I could always see them like dance in the light when I played this thing, but it wasn't until I really cleaned this guitar up that I saw that one and went, yeah, that's just really, really dark abalone. So you've got some interesting figuring within there. That's just something that makes these things interesting. But that's not a unique feature to this guitar. Apparently that's just what they did for these guitars within this particular model range. Seems kind of strange, but it works for this one. Well, we've got 22 frets here on what appears to be closest to a nine and a half inch radius, 25 and a half inch scale length, 1.69 inch nut width. That increases to 2.03 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.87. That increases to 0.91 by the 12th. Here's what the neck looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. Just a constant C shape, maybe a little bit more rounded towards the first fret area. Definitely a C shaped neck. I mean, not overly chunky by any means, but not too, too thin. It's got a good shape to it. The headstock's pretty nice on this as well. You have a silver fender logo that's nice and metallic there a dual string tree. Your truss rod gets capped off with walnut wood right there. And I personally like the fenders that you adjust from right there. A little bit easier than at the base of the neck, but it makes it not vintage correct. Then another nice feature on this one is locking tuners stock from the factory. Moving on to the back, we've got some more goodness as far as the wood cranes go. I really like how it just all follows the comfort cut right here. It's an interesting feeling guitar, that's for sure. You don't really notice it while you play it though, so it's just mainly a visual thing. But again, you can see th those woods just did not line up too good together. I mean, you can see it's actually a three-piece body. Here's the other one. But the blending of these two is fairly seamless unless you're looking at it on the edges. That one, not so much. But I'm sure that's just kind of a look of the draw type thing. But lots of cool wood grain along the edges here. It'd be kind of cool to see like a pink colored one like with some black in the interior like going after a brain <laughs> but this is either weird from the factory or somebody has uh, added another spring and just kind of readjusted these to the way they like it i'm not gonna touch it because it plays great as it is i was kind of scared that changing the strings might alter the setup but so far it seems okay but the neck plate reads fender it has a micro tilt in there as well as the slight heel contour right there then you move on to a satin maple neck. This is still pretty well satin. I haven't glossed that over. I do like the satin necks. But did you notice on the face of the headstock, that's actually a gloss from the factory. That's just to make it look fancy. Whereas the areas that you come in contact with are more satin. But that serial number takes it to 2013. And hey, I found something cool in the case candy. Hidden within all of the stuff, I found the original hang tag. So yeah, that guy's story lines up. I already knew it lined up because the serial numbers matched, but there's the original hang tag with the Hermes music, and their blowout price was $1470.95. Needless to say, so far, looking at regular values, I, I don't think this model's done too well if you adjust for inflation. But that's okay. Guitar isn't all about money. Sometimes it's just what you like. Having the right guitar that inspires you to play is a musical enjoyment that's worth more than money. All said and done, not too bad of a weight, seven pounds, 2.4 ounces. Let's go ahead and plug the blue jean baby in.
This is my favorite Stratocaster. I mean, it's all about the neck pickup. It's just so ridiculously juicy. <laughs> the pickups down here they get a little bit too much most of this demo was at like uh, about a seven or eight on the tone <laughs> Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't try to buy this from me. Just let me enjoy it, okay? <laughs> All right, we'll catch you tomorrow.